Hello everybody, it's SOD Madhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Skoda T56, the, well, the first tier 8 release of the Chesovakian, or Chesovakia, heavy tanks that has been dropped into the game. And I can actually tell you guys this right now, um, I'm really enjoying this tank, I haven't put my 50 matches inside of it, but I'm kind of thinking that's being a little bit of a limitation on my end, that I invest 50 matches before I do a review of a tank. So I think that I'll invest a few matches into it before I do a review of a tank, or, I mean, a, a review should be like, it's just, you, you play it immediately. You just call it good. You know what, we're just going to jump right into this. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump right into the statistics here. Uh, starting off with the Skoda T56, we're looking at 208 standard pin, 248 premium pin, along with 68 millimeters of high explosive pin. Damage, you're looking at 460 across the board until you load the HE for 640. I have been able to use those high explosive rounds, and I'll tell you now. Um, I, I saw 670 and then 604, and uh, poor Waffle Panzer IV, Tier 9. Yeah, he did not like what I did to him in the slightest. Now, even though this tank is... Um, such a high alpha gun with a decent reload. Its limitations are top speed of 35 and view, well, view range at 370. Still can someone's actually not too bad for a heavy tank at 0.12. That's actually uh, some of the best that you can get inside of your uh, heavies. Along with that, you have two guns that you can choose from. You can either go with the single shot or you can go with the auto loader, which is a two shot, which takes 25 seconds to reload. Or you can go with the single shot, which takes a 13.5. With uh, the crew loadout that I'm running, the reload is in the range of 20.7 with the uh, dual shot. And with the single shot, we're looking at about 11 seconds on the dot. So we're actually be doing the review with the uh, double shot here. So aiming time, 3 seconds. Um, I'm actually kind of wondering... Uh, I'm actually using Enhanced Gun Lane Drive to uh, give me 12% of my aiming speed to be able to boost that up a tad bit. And that is just because I don't want to feel like I'm limited inside the fight because of what I have put together on this. So we're going to be playing two matches in it today with the single shot and we're going to be running the double shot as well and see how we can do with both of them. Um, initial clip reload, we're looking at 3.5 seconds, a 30 round magazine, like a 30 magazine capacity. That would be insane. Yeah. You'd be loading for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm giggling at myself, but with the way the tank fills and the alpha eight degrees of gun depression, accuracy of 0.42, the 30 rounds, uh, 30 round mag, uh, I'm doing it again. Um, uh, you know what? Um, okay, 30 rounds of ammunition. I don't really feel like as much of a limitation for this tank because of the 460 alpha. But the penetration of 208 standard, um, I do like to carry a tad bit more premium inside mine than I do standard rounds because the way I look at it is I'm going to fire my average amount of rounds that I normally get off with a weapon with this reload. So let's say 10 rounds per match. So if I'm loading 10 standard rounds, it, once I dip through my standards and dump into my reserves, which is going to be premium rounds, which um, 248 pin, it's, it's going to be a lot better. Um, so the gun depression at 8 degrees, this can work a ridgeline a tad bit. You are limited due to the uh, weak spot on top. And if enemies are loading heat rounds or if they have high enough penetration, for instance... They can go through your side cheek here, which is slightly exposed, the hatch on top. The 100mm top plate, you need to be utilizing your gun depression to be able to make that top plate work in any scenario. Just because that's how this tank has been put together for auto ricochet. And against heat rounds, it is going to suffer quite a bit uh, with heat rounds in the range of, let's say, uh, 112. 112 with 250 heat pin. There we go, we're looking at an effective armor of 297, 300 millimeters. So against heat rounds, it's going to be doing pretty decent. But once you start ending up against tier 9s or 10s, you will find it to be suffering a tad bit. Uh, underneath the turret here, this is pinnable even by standard rounds. Just because you're looking at... It's really small, but I have been hit there, it's only 25 millimeters. Uh, right underneath the turret. Sometimes they'll bounce off of your top plate into it, and it's really weird to see that. Um, I actually had to go through a couple of replays 
to see where the shell hit, and that's exactly what happened. It came off the top plate and bounced straight into the bottom of the turret, even though that's such a tiny little part to hit. Talk about my luck. But jumping back over. Um, okay, so turret armor, 220 in the front, 95 in the side, 70 in the rear. That's going to be nice. There's no overmatching this unless you're shooting the top of the turret. Because the top of the turret, you're looking at 52 millimeters, which for a tier 8, 52 is amazing because that's going to prevent... Uh, 152s and 155s from overmatching your top armor. However, it's not going to be stopping a Turan because Turans will just overmatch because of 0.4. Those things are redonkulous. And you have a tiny little slit in the back of 30 millimeters, but primarily you're never going to be showing that unless you're driving up a hill. Top armor on the hull as well as only 30 millimeters. And with the rear being 70 and the lower part being around 50. If you're going to be loading high explosives against these, you're going to want to aim a tad bit lower on the tanks near the bottom. The exact bottom to be able to penetrate those high explosive shells. If you're aiming directly at the rear 70, you're just going to be slabbing a big chunk of metal and never penetrating. So, engine power, we're looking at 650 with the power to weight of 15, well, the 15, 13.54. There's dyslexia kicking in, just putting the 5 at the 3. Now, with the power to weight, I kind of don't feel like it matters too much because of the speed being only 35. I feel like you're averaging 30 the entire time that you are playing the tank, and you're not going to be running into any problems. If you want to take a power terrain, you can sacrifice the aim time for that or sacrifice ventilation for that. Um, sadly, since this has two guns, you have a single shot and an auto loader, you cannot use advanced loader to increase your reload by that additional 10%, so you are stuck a tad bit. But with a reverse speed of 15, this tank does feel extremely mobile inside of the uh, queues and the way that it feels in combat. It feels like it can handle a brawling situation if it needs to, just because you can get in and out. And with a few of the matches I've been playing inside this tank, I've actually been really enjoying the fact that if you're side scraping off your rear, um, this is one of those tanks that is heavily effective whenever it comes down to side scraping, reverse side scraping, just because your weak spot on the left side is completely covered if you're coming around the uh, right side. So if you're reverse and you're aiming down your right side, just that additional armor of 70 millimeters plus the way that it's angled, not even heat rounds are going to go through this, uh, even in top tier matchmaking or bottom tier matchmaking against tier 10s. Uh, this was a really viable effort, and this was tested over on Fisherman's Bay. I did enjoy it. It wasn't too bad. But every once in a while, they'll get a shot into your engine bay, and sadly, fire. You will get set on fire just because of where the uh, location of your fuel tanks are located. If they aim and hit the overmatch on top of your tank, your entire engine bay is right there, and the fuel tank is actually right on top. So you will have a lot of bad experiences with that. But honestly, with a 50% discount currently going on, sadly, if you buy this after the video and it's already been gone and whatever, so 6,000 gold, this is honestly a still of a deal of a tank currently. And in my opinion, this thing is extremely amazing. 50 millimeters of spaced armor on the front, it causes a lot of mayhem just with overall defense. Now, whenever it comes down to this tank's overall mobility and traverse speed of everything else, the turret, 24 degrees, and then the hull at 26 degrees, it does feel pretty rapid and a tad bit slow. It's kind of in that middle perfect balance, but with the terrain resistance of 1.1 on hard and 1.2 on medium and then 2.3 on soft, I highly recommend Born Leader and Off-Road Driving for this tank because if you don't have off-road driving, you will find this thing to just absolutely dig in and not want to move at all. Uh, 850 meters of signal range, yeah, you're never going to need to boost that. Also, it's a premium tank, and I don't do this often. It has a 50% silver earned bonus. Uh, along with that, it's premium earned bonus. I mean, of course, it's a premium tank. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just a Muppet today. I'm enjoying it. Overall, though... Uh, you got 85 millimeters in the bottom plate. You can overextend, bait some nice shells into the top plate. You got 70 millimeters of side armor. Your rear armor is also at 70 millimeters, so if you really want to, you can even poke your rear around a quarter if you're willing to and ricochet a shell off it. I have done it one time, and I'm never going to do it again because the second shell that came, uh, the pain and the permatrack. So 
keep in mind this is viable i just don't recommend it now whenever you are deciding to um pop up and you are side scraping a corner your best bet and i've mentioned this a couple of times always angle your turret a tad bit more as you're coming backwards because that's going to be increasing the thickness plus it's going to put the barrel in the way and it's going to cause a lot more mayhem but even just flat on and doing a slight angle still 340 even down low 290 across the board top armor you know this is against ap also um with this tank being the way that it is there is one thing that is a big problem that wargaming has been doing multiple times back to back to back so over on the bottom right of the screen it says apcr so this is something I actually posted over on their Discord saying that they need to start fixing this because this is a big issue. I hope that these rounds are not APCR because if they are, that means they only readjust by 2 degrees rather than the 5 degrees that AP rounds should be readjusting. And for these low pin rounds at 248 for your premium, AP would be the better choice because that just means they're going to make contact rather than APCR hitting you know 220 millimeters of armor. It's actually hitting 180 millimeters of armor with the AP rounds because they readjust by 5 degrees. So that is something I would like to see fixed just because it is simple and it's a big problem that they're doing it because it confuses me. And yeah, it's just not fun. So if we take this and come down, they are indeed AP rounds, premium AP rounds. But then the second that you come back over to console, it says APCR and it's mislabeled. I really hope that they are mislabeled. If not, and it is something else that is going to be not that fun. Okay, so we're going to be putting two matches inside the Skoda. Uh, one with the single shot, one with the dual shot. Um, along with that, the Skoda shell velocity is, I want to say, 1,030 meters as I just closed out of everything because I'm a Muppet. 1,020 meters. So yeah, your, your premium and your standard rounds are going to be traveling at the same speed. Your high explosives are 863 meters a second. So it's not too bad. And top tier. This is going to be nice. Um, also, with the entire line being introduced, I know that my review is taking a minute to get out. But the TNH 105, the tier 9, the tier 10... Um, I'm actually really enjoying the TNH 105, and more than likely, I'll be doing that review coming up pretty soon as well. So, overall, um, I don't feel like these tanks are going to be breaking the matchmaking too much, just because they're slow, their penetration's a little bit on the low side, and if you know how to handle your armor instead of a heavy tank, you can take these guys on without much of a problem. Now, with... The overall performance of these tanks, they are doing quite a bit more. They are newer, so you are going to be running into a little bit of a wall whenever you're taking them on, just because they're a little bit newer. But if you see one, you know, just driving flat straight at you, you can penetrate the top plate basically the entire time as long as you have 200 penetration or more. And once these tanks did release, and I was um, working on the third mark for my VK 4502K, it actually came a lot easier because I knew these tanks from PC and I knew that I was going to be able to just throw rounds right through their uh, front plates even with only 200 penetration. So it caught a lot of people off guard with uh, that VK. And now taking a look at the top speed, I'm going to go ahead and subtract myself here for the uh, matches. 22 uphill, 28 degrees of gun depression, Dragon. Okay, we're actually not going to take that shot. Progetto has taken two rounds. Artillery's focused on us as well. Let's actually just jump down real fast. Let's see if this guy wants to come up with us. I hear artillery and it makes me just cringe on the inside. Approaching the top of here. It's always best to take the right side because with 8 degrees of gun depression, it's going to give you the... Uh, best overall 504 high roll we're gonna put one more in we're actually gonna dirt it and we're gonna get set on fire by artillery and our driver killed ammo racked there we go you know just a nice good juicy thousand damage from artillery and artillery 
I don't know about you guys, but I think that shows off just like how much artillery can do, even though it's across the map. Um, I'm excited for artillery 2.0, and I know a lot of people are, and I'm hoping that they do it correctly rather than just hammering it out and uh, making it just not worth it. Well, attempt number two. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, up against tier 10s this run, Tehran, Leopard 1, Type 5. Type 5 I'm definitely going to struggle against if I see him in the middle. And more than likely since we're going middle, I am going to run into him without a problem. Because he's looked slower. Ah, this might be a bad decision. FV 100, T54. This might be okay, actually. And leading the pack, I don't know if I want to lead the pack or not, but... I, I guess we're gonna send it. If I die again right off the bat, I'm just gonna move it to the single shot. We're gonna call it good. The double is devastating though if we can get both of them to land and penetrate. Potentially you can get damage in the range of a thousand. And it is just absolutely fantastic. So there's one, 487. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a number two. 426. He now knows that we're on reload. Let's keep some angles on him. We don't want to give him a chance. And there we go. His three shots are now gone. P34 under the giant type 5. Alright, so they went out to the far right. And we're going to see what we can do here in the mid. There we go, taking down into Ron. That's actually really nice right off the bat. Taking a look at the map here. There we go, 257 pushing up. Let's go ahead and get in cover behind the wall. Flip our gun. Alrighty. What do we got? T54 E1. You know, I should be safe to drop down, or we can just hold. Four hundred and eighty. Yeah, see the this gun just it can high roll. It can do so much. Four hundred and sixty base alpha. I mean the standard rounds of two hundred and eight. It is a little bit lacking, but I played the LPC and I'll tell you now, two hundred and eight's actually not too bad. Whatever comes down to it. There is a way to get up here from the backside, and I don't know which way that is to get up here. Because with the redesign of Pearl River. I'm struggling to type it on. Alright, I'm not gonna be able to do a whole lot right here. Unless I want to look for that 257 to pull around, but I doubt he's going to. Leopard 1. Okay, probably get some high explosives into him. Don't want to try it though. Go ahead and pop that consumable, get that view range bump. So the view range is a massive limiting factor for this tank, just because with it being 370 base, it makes it really hard to do a few things with this tank. There we go, hit the ammo rack. Definitely not a reset, but we are not going to sit in the open right here. Ow, and we got some spot assist through the wall. That is nice. Alright, we're unspotted. Let's go ahead and get a mirror bot. I don't want to be sitting right there. Yoda. Well, so far with the uh, matches I have invested inside the uh, Skoda T56 and the Chesvakians all together, I can say that these tanks are definitely devastating when they are top tier. And if they are top tier along with being some of the only eights inside the category, here we go. Can't get that flat spot. 
I'm a Muppet. I could have overmatched his uh, rear armor. I don't even know. I, I just barely thought about that. Alright, so we went ahead and fired all 10 shots. Loading in the premium. It's down to 7 versus 5, though. This is still a pretty close game. Let's go to T56. Let's go ahead and pop that consumable. Tree fell backwards. It's worth a try. IS-3, Borask, and Skoda T-56 left as their only tanks that are mobile right now. Okay, the minimap on this is really confusing. There we go, a tad bit more spot assist. Now we got the hit points, we can play aggressive. Especially since it's already been uh, quite some time. Wondering if I want to load my explosives, but it doesn't seem like I'm going to need to. As you guys can tell, this thing is. Definitely not the fastest. However, the tier 8 on the tech tree, I actually really enjoy playing that. 15 plus power to weight, and it's got a 50 top speed. That thing is really nice. And if you want to run the single shot, you can. It's just as competitive as the double. I actually think the uh, single shot's better than the double, without a doubt. You know what? We're actually going to wait for the Borask. Sad face. We're gonna go ahead and start our re reloading. Never mind. Oh, artillery! It's a bad chat. We're gonna want to cut right. Get that tree cut left. That's uncomfortable. And just a waiting game. Slow match, but that tends to happen. Could be a whole lot better. And somehow got MVP. <laughs> I don't even know. 105,000, 4,000 crew XP, two destroyed, two detections. Yeah, tier 8's instead of a tier 10 game. That's normally how it goes, though. You get the experience bonus. So... With uh, console compared to PC, I actually really enjoy what console is doing. You know, this is definitely applause for the console devs, Wargaming. I enjoy the fact that they have given a lot of tanks multiple guns. I mentioned this in uh, live stream a little while back uh, with things I want to see. And having multiple gun choices is amazing. Because it makes premium tanks, makes tech tree tanks that much better to, you know, grind for and play and keep as long as you want because it makes it to where you can be a little bit more versatile you know if you don't want to sit down and wait 20 seconds to load you can load and in 11 seconds you can put a single shell inside there and pop it out and a lot of people whenever they see the Skoda they're gonna be thinking double shot so whenever you're throwing out the single shells it, it gives you a little bit more versatility in the close quarters combat while the double shot is a lot better for mid-range and trying to avoid those close quarter scenarios Unless you have to get in them, but I mean, if you have to, 960 potential damage is really nice to have. Or 940, whatever the number is, 460, yeah, 920. It is an amazing output that these tanks are capable of. But with the versatility of having two guns, it's going to make the longevity of these tanks absolutely amazing. And 40, 43, let's not get hit by artillery again for a... Uh, Outrageous amount of damage. We're actually just going to go ahead and just want to full send this and 
deal with the repercussions from the uh, backside over there as they may come. And we are going to be exposed to artillery right here in this position as well, so it is a little bit of a dual-sided blade. We're going to be getting aggressive and risking seeing artillery, but trade-off is we should be able to get some damage out. And speaking of which, we can actually do that reverse side scraping right here. Except for trying to aim over the rear, this thing is a little bit uh, awkward. And there's artillery for half our health. There we go. Penetration. And pop a top. Is this like a, a two for two? You know, I, I get destroyed by artillery, ammo wrecked, and uh, it's like it, bo both of the uh, top tier games I get absolutely wrecked. We'll see how this one goes. <laughs> You know, problems always occur, and they happen. You know, just like I tell Blade, don't worry about it. There is absolutely no need. Because the second you get angry and you start to, uh, you know, question it, you start to waver a tad bit, which makes it a bit hard to play. By that point, you're better off just playing something else for a tad bit. Or, uh, playing a Mimi tank. I mean, don't take my gameplay tonight that this tank is uh, bad or middle ground. This tank is actually fantastic, and I'm looking forward to playing it a lot more. And more than likely, by the way that this thing is performing, I will be playing it quite a bit more. Just hopefully my luck will be better uh, in the morning than it is right now with the ammo rack and artillery two-shotting me. Also, I played one more match, not inside this tank, inside the uh, King Tiger. And I got one shot by a T-92 with an AP shell, so I am kind of questioning the uh, logic tonight if I even should be playing. But I'm here, I'm there's no artillery this match, and uh, I'm kind of hoping for a good game. E-75, uh, TNH, the TZ, well, the, the VZ-51, uh, the uh, Tier 9 of Czech tanks. You know, I'm kind of just hoping that things go as planned and not as a giant issue sitting in front of me. At least there's no artillery. Alright, let's go to T-56. VZ-51. I might want to try and pull up and get up top if possible, but I'll be exposed to tank destroyers that are camping around uh, G4 F4, so I do want to be a tad bit careful. Unupgraded T-10. You know what, even though he's got low penetration, let's actually support him in the rear here. 130, wait, there we go. Look for those angles. Let's go ahead and start our reload here. It's actually time to back off because he's getting shot from the right. Five hundred and twelve, that kinda seems like a Yag Tiger. Maybe, hold on. Borsig. Maybe be might be a Borsig off in the or the SU. Alright, let's do an aggressive drop right here. This might be good, this might be bad, we will find out. Four hundred and sixty, that's a perfect roll. And T10 is just pushing in. There's an Oho. Might want to load the premium since they did buff the armor of the Japanese. Charioteer. Sad face. Alright, let's back off.
11 to 13. I need, I need to actually make a play here, but I don't have a big enough gun to overmatch the uh, E-75. It doesn't mean I can't pin the side of his turret. Alright, seems like the uh, VZ-51 is running the single shot. That is a little bit more threatening in my opinion. A shot. We could have got a shot over top, but here I am just not making the right play. Just going to go ahead and leave the premium loaded in. Don't want to start that reload. He's making it hard to see. Oh my gosh, fire! Alright, I really should be swapping back to standard rounds pretty soon. And there we go, Borsig is deaf. Oh, Borsig is down low, okay. That means the SU-130 is up high. Go ahead and load in those high explosives. See if we can get some of that 600 alpha out. Two hundred and ninety-one. That's okay for a snapshot though, because we did just get some track assist. For a sake, did just fire. Let's go ahead and take a rush. 639, that's always nice to see. Down to one high explosive left. Let's actually go ahead and load it because of the, uh, I can't remember what the SU was on, but 900 assists, there's a chance that he's actually, yep, there we go, 224. Super Hellcat though. 281 plus some assist. So yeah, we are kind of hitting tracks. And with the AP, what's so nice about this though is the 460 alpha knowing that we can shoot this guy and basically have an 80% chance to outright knock him out. That is really nice to know. And sadly, our shell did not make it. Alright, type 4. Guys, tonight has not been good to me. I've literally put the recording on pause and then sat there. Was that an MRX? That was an MRX. There's been a lot of MRX tonight. But yeah, I just paused it and then sat there and watched the match. I watched the first one all the way through, and it was an AT-15 that drove across the map on Great Wall. It took 10 minutes. I'm gonna pull my hair out. But MVP, 213,000 silver, only a second class mastery badge. And top, I wish I did 4,000, but I got assist. And yes, 724 of it was track assist, so that's nice to see. So yeah, the high explosives, they did pay off because of the assist. That is nice. Okay, I'm going back to garage, and I I, I totally don't want to pull my hair out over that. This is long. <laughs> okay, well, starting off... Advanced optics, enhanced gun lane drive, and improved ventilation. Jumping over to commander. This is actually a transfer from my Russian crew. So born leader, rapid loading, running gun, steady aim, snapshot, six sense, situational awareness, track mechanic, and off-road driving. Honestly, you probably could take off run and gun 
and swap run and gun out with let's say like rapid aim to increase that turret traverse speed or to even put a clutch braking on this to help it give it kind of a little bit more of a boost whenever you're trying to rotate around um more than likely i will be trying this tank out and trying the rest of the line out with um my american crew setup which basically just swaps around a couple of perks uh snapshot running gun and on it steady aim is on it along with rapid aim and clutch braking so that would be nice to try out. Other than that, you guys, the Skoda T56, it is definitely a solid choice and worth picking up. Um, sadly, I had two matches in a row. The first matches with both guns just not going well, yet we're top tier. And somehow I do better and don't die immediately whenever I'm bottom tier or middle tier. So apparently I do better against tens than I do being a top tier. Uh, I, I don't know why that is, but it, apparently it is the way it is. Now, Skoda 256, uh, the cons, it's slow. It's a little bit lower on the view range side. Um, power to weight's a little bit lower. Other than that, it's not a bad tank. I, I have been enjoying it with the matches I have invested inside this tank. Um, not really much to say. Uh, this is just definitely worth the pickup, and I don't think anyone would be disappointed to get their hands on it. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the review of the tank. It is definitely good. A little bit of cons, but other than that, big gun, big alpha. You can do a double shot. Massive potential. I mean, just look at the bear. I'm actually kind of surprised that this is a commander I'm going to be running quite a bit. It's a lot better than Becky Lynch and the Bulge, bigger than any of the guys. I mean, she is the man, but that uh, Wargaming does have to take it literally. Uh... I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here before I make a fool out of myself. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you guys enjoyed this kind of review, let me know in the comment sections. For real, this would make it a lot easier if I did it more like this. But, you know, most of the time, I take the time out to play matches, get some average games. I don't ever show off my best matches. Occasionally I will if it's like Kalabanovs or Radley Walters, whenever those pop up. And sadly, I missed one that had both. And, uh, yeah, you guys, I totally just spent an hour here recording 37 minutes. So, yeah, this is pain, a lot of it, and artillery freaking hurts. Till next time, see you guys in the battlefield. I'm out.